In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to create multiple row DNA charts. You can see I've got a picture here of an example of what I'm looking at. You'll see that I've got the names of different prime ministers in the UK and how long they lived versus how long they reigned, but those are in separate rows. To start, let's take a look at the data. So this data comes from Alex Gimson at Import.io. I worked on this uh, project with him uh, maybe a month or so ago. And uh, so the, the data is scraped by import.io, and I just downloaded it in, into Excel. So you see, you've got the name of the PM, what their party was, the URL to Wikipedia, and then four key metrics, when they were born, when they died, when they took office, and then when they left office. So the first thing we need to do in Tableau is connect to the data. So you go to a new sheet, click on connect to data, Excel, and I'm going to go down to my UK PMs data set. Okay, so I'm going to quickly change the name of the data set. I'm not going to worry about an extract for now, but one of the things I have to do first is I have to pivot these data sets. Uh, so basically, I when I highlight these different records, I'm going to click on the drop down and click on pivot. And now you see I've got two new fields. I'm going to go ahead and rename this one as my measure names. Uh, maybe I'll just call this my measures so I don't get it confused with my measure names. And then I'll rename this one as my year. And hit OK. All right, and now this particular, uh, you can see this is set to a number, which is which is what I like. That's good. And the reason I need to pivot this data set is because when I create the DNA charts, I'm going to want two rows of DNA charts. I'm going to want one row for how long the person lived and the second row for how long they were in office. So that's why I need to pivot the data set. So I'll go ahead, go ahead and go over here to my sheet, and you'll see that my data looks nice and neat now. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on my... Uh, on my year measure and change the default properties of the number format. I'm going to make it a number of zero decimals and get rid of the comma. That way uh, when I drag it into the view it looks just like a, a year. Okay, so if I drag the name out into the view and I put year into the rows, you'll see right now it's combining all the years and maybe I could color it and set it to circles. So we've got four different circles now, so let's just focus on a couple people for now. So let's just do keep only, and I'm going to double click on the axis and uncheck the include zero. Okay, so now you can see we've got four dots per person, one for when they were born, one for when they died, uh, one for when they took office, and one for when they left office, but we want these on multiple rows. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create four calculated fields. I'm going to call this the first one born, and I'm going to say if my measure is equal to, and it looks like the name of that is PM born. Oops, spelled it wrong. PM born. Then return me the year. Otherwise, give me null. So that's going to give me the date of when they were born. I'm going to duplicate that choose edit and then I'm gonna call this one died so PM died return the year same type of thing okay let's duplicate again and we're gonna call this one uh, uh, term start for when they started their term change the measures to PM from and then let's duplicate this one and let's call this one term end and we'll call it until PM until okay so now we've got four measures I'm gonna go ahead and clear my sheet to, to sort of start over here <clears throat> okay so now if I put my uh, let's put my names back on the rows and I'm gonna start building my DNA charts so I could put born on the columns and put died on the same axis. You'll see it becomes two green rulers, which will create a combined axis. And then I'm going to drag measure names to the color. Change my mark type to circle. 
And now you see I've got a nice little, uh, the, the makings of a nice little DNA chart. So the trick from there is to duplicate the measure values. And on the second one, I'm going to change it to a line. But my path is going to be measure names. So I'm going to move my measure names from color to path. From there, I create a dual axis. And I'm going to move the, the marks for my circles to the front. Okay, and lastly, uh, since we know that the years never start at zero, I'm just going to go ahead and click on uh, the uh, uncheck the include zero, get rid of the titles, and there we go. Okay, so now we need to synchronize the axis. All right, so now the problem is we've got, looks like we've got uh, Edward Smith uh, Stanley is doubled because uh, it looks like he probably was in office. So it looks like some of these people were probably in office twice. So I'm going to go ahead and change my measures to an average. Okay, there we go. That looks better. All right. So now well, the thing we want to do next is we want to actually create a second row for each person that uh, represents their, so, so these two represent their life. So I'm going to go ahead and set the default colors for both of these to blue. Okay, but we want to have a second row that represents when they were in office. So to do that, I'm going to create a calculated field on my measures again. And I'm going to call this life or, uh, so how about I call this, uh, I'll just call it my date group. And I'm going to say if measures is equal to PM born or measures is equal to PM died, then life else rain end. And what this is going to do is it's going to evaluate the names of my measures and basically give me a new group. So I'm going to drag that to my rows now. And you'll see I've got uh, the, the makings of a DNA chart for uh, each, each set of, of, uh, of, of metrics. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add my term end and my term start into the measure value shelf. Again, make them both averages. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and double click on my colors and make both of these red. All right, so it uh, looks like we've got something here. Uh, we've got 212 nulls. Let's go ahead and hide that indicator. Okay, so uh, what this is showing us now is for each person, it shows us uh, how long they lived and what the length of their reign was. So you can see for Clement Attlee, uh, he was born in uh, 1883. He died in 1967. And the, his term went from 1945 to 1951. Okay, so I'm going to change a couple of things here. So I've got four, all of, all of these metrics here. So I'm going to right click on, I'm going to highlight all of my measures and change my default aggregation for these to average. That way the names show up a little bit better. So now when I hover over, you see it just says term start. Okay. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to default properties. Um, I want to change my number format on these to custom number with no decimals and uh, no commas. Okay, so there we go. So we see that uh, it looks like there are a couple of uh, people that have been uh, in office twice, but let's not worry about that for now. Okay, so now we've got our multiple DNA charts. And I, but I need to add some filtering. Maybe I want to be able to filter by the, uh, the century that they were, were in rain. So I'm going to create another calculated field. And this one I'm going to call my century. And I'm going to say if the left two uh, of my year field are equal to 17, then 1700s. Else if the left two of my year field are equal to 18, then 1800s, oops. And then we're going to do the same thing for 
the left to if it's 19 then we'll say 19 hundreds and then we'll say if it's equal to 20 then the 2000s else uh, I'm going to do else if it's equal to 21 then the 21st century and okay so it doesn't like this because I'm calling it with uh, a string and a float Okay, so I need to, sorry, I need to convert this to a string. Uh, I need to do that everywhere. So let me just copy that and paste it here. Paste it here. Paste it here. Okay, it looks like I messed something up here, so get rid of that. Okay, and then I need to put these inside of quotes. No big deal. I'm trying to evaluate a string with the left function, so that's why I have to convert the year to a string. Okay, so now I've got the century field, and I'm going to go ahead and show my quick filter for that, and maybe make it a single value list. Okay, so if we look at those in the 1700s, um, you can see we've got uh, 1800s, 1900s, something like that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and look at everybody for now. Uh, all right, so uh, it looks like we've got some nulls here for some reason. Oh, because we've got some people in the 1600s. So let's go ahead and add those people in. So let's uh, let's go here and let's make this an else if. And let's put our 1600s first. If this equals 16, then 1600s. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's a little bit better. All right. Um, okay, there's probably some other ways that might do this to make it a little bit better, but that's good for now. Okay, so if we're looking at just those that were uh, in the 1700s, okay, so you see part of the problem now is that my data set gets messed up a little bit. So I think what I'm going to actually end up doing is going back into my Excel file and uh, probably adding another column for the century in here because it's not quite working out the way I wanted it to here in Tableau. But for now, let's let's uh, let's just ignore that. Let's take century back out of the view. Okay, very good. I'm going to go ahead then and hide this header, and we have a nice little uh, DNA chart. So lastly, maybe I want to go ahead and uh, hide that header so that looks a little bit better. Maybe make these a little bit wider. Okay, so then I'm going to go to each person and format the name and set the alignment to the middle and maybe make it the middle right. Okay, so that looks good. And then uh, maybe the last thing we want to do is let's create a parameter that allows the user to pick which, uh, which field they want to sort on. So actually first maybe we want to just look at the way we could do a sort. So let's sort in ascending order by you know their birth date maybe and you'll see we get a nice little sort by the first blue dot i could then maybe change that and say okay maybe we want to do it by when they died and now you'll see we got a sort by the right blue dot and we could do the same thing for term start and term end but i'd rather let my user have that control so i'm going to go ahead and create a parameter that says uh choose the sort order. And I'm going to make this a string and make it a list. And I'm going to say by birth date, or birth year, year of death, uh, term start, and term end. OK, hit OK. And now you can see I've got this parameter control. That allows the user to pick how they want to sort. Maybe I'll make it a single value list so it's a little bit quicker for the users. Okay, but it's not doing anything yet because we haven't told Tableau to use that in a calculation. So I'm going to create a calculated field based on my parameter. And I'm going to call this my sort order. I'm going to say if my, or actually let's just do a case statement this time. Case sort order, when it is birth year, then born. 
when it is year of death, then death, let's see what I call it, died. When term start, then term start, else term end, end. All right, and we need this whole thing to be an, we need our default aggregation for this to be an average. And now we can use this field in our sort. So I'm going to go back into my sort name. And instead of sorting by died, I'm going to sort it by my sort order in ascending order. Okay, so now you see I've got term start selected. So it's sorting by the left red dot. Or I could do term end and maybe make it get sorted by the right term dot. So actually I'm going to change some things with my colors here. So I'm going to go into my Tableau 20 palette. And let's say that my born starts with a light blue and my died is a dark blue. And then my term start is a light red and my uh, term end is a dark red. All right, so there we go. So now you can quickly see how the, um, how the create multiple DNA charts, uh, multi-row DNA charts. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, I tried to show you a bit about formatting, um, how to reshape your data in Tableau, how to use uh, a parameter for sorting, um, lots and lots of different tricks in here. Hopefully you found it helpful, and if there's anything else you'd like to see in the future, just let me know. Thanks.